Since the beginning of time, dealing with fires has always been a problem. In the early days, it was difficult to fight a fire, so there was little choice but to let it run its course. When Fallbrook evolved into a town, water was in short supply and not easily accessible. To put out a fire, disc plows, wet sacks, and shovels were used. There's an old story about a barley field fire that was getting close to a ranch. A couple of cowboys shot a steer and dragged the carcass down the fire line to stop the fire. The method worked, but it was inefficient. In 1885, the only firefighting organization that Fallbrook had was a bucket brigade. When church bells rang on days other than Sunday, the citizens knew that there was a fire in town. Everyone ran to the fire and helped in any way that they could. When the telephone was installed, Mr. Bailey, the telephone operator, who worked out of his house at the 200 block of South Main, would use three long rings to call people out. In 1905, a stove caused a fire in the barber shop on the northeast corner of Maine and Alvarado. This fire was so close to the heart of Fallbrook's downtown district that it raised a concern about the possibility of a major fire destroying all the buildings in the downtown area. Two years later, in 1907, the merchants of Fallbrook installed a water system to protect their stores, a gasoline-driven pump and an elevated 10,000-gallon water tank were constructed where the Arts and Cultural Center is today. This was the first step toward formal fire protection. In 1911, the second step occurred when G.A. Byron became the first fire warden for the district. In 1912, Henry Ellis was appointed fire warden. That year, an article from Fallbrook Enterprise read, On Tuesday morning at about 8 a.m., the home of S.J. Fair took fire from the explosion of a spraying preparation. Within five minutes after the explosion, and the, the entire interior of the house was in flames, and it was impossible to save anything. There was a small insurance on the furniture and $750 insurance on the house. In 1915, water in downtown Fallbrook became scarce due to a drought. People were having to dig their wells deeper to secure the water needed. Mrs. William Pittenger had the well at her house located on the northeast corner of what is today Mission Road and Fig Street, dug deeper to a depth of 75 feet, so the newspaper reported. A newspaper article also stated, a plea that Fallbrook was in need of adequate fire protection was made after there were three fires in town in as many weeks. Tofanelli's olive mill was destroyed with a $3,000 loss. Wilcox's blacksmith shop suffered roof damage in a fire, and the Gaston residence at the 500 block of South Main caught fire, causing the family to lose nearly everything. In 1916, Fred White was made fire warden. By 1921, the drought had continued. William Ellis hired Howard Harrison to dig the Ellis Hotel's well deeper. Ellis was quote, quoted as saying, I don't know just how much deeper we will have to go, but I intend when the work is finished to have all the water we will ever need in the future. That same year, there was raised a cry of fire at the house of Ed Mayers. The newspaper said, Almost the total population of the town was at the fire in an incredibly short time. Every sort of vessel that would hold water was pressed into service, and soon streams of men were running back and forth from every well in that section. The only insurance was $500 carried on the house. The paper said, It certainly emphasized the need for a water system if we want to avoid having the town wiped off the map someday. Finally, in 1922, the Fallbrook Public Utility District was incorporated. It was originally formed to supply the water from a reservoir and a well to serve the needs of the downtown area, which consisted of approximately 500 acres. The location chosen for the new 200,000-gallon reservoir was near the corner of Minnesota and Doherty Streets, 
the highest point in the vicinity, 185 feet above the heart of Fallbrook. In 1926, the first piece of firefighting equipment was purchased, a hose and cart. It was pulled to, a, to fire by, a man, by men. The paper said, the new fire hose which arrived in Fallbrook Friday has attracted much attention, giving to every resident of the community a feeling of protection, which is worth the several hundred dollars it has cost. The cart is now located in the Historical Society Museum. In 1927, a committee consisting of Gilbert Mays, James Potter, and Victor Westfall was appointed by President L. C. Ellis at the November Chamber of Commerce meeting to organize a voluntary fire company, and L. C. Ellis was appointed voluntary fire chief. Also in 1927, the home of L. A. Lenfers caught fire. The paper said, the fire started about two o'clock and burned so rapidly that in less than half an hour, the house was entirely gone with the exception of a couple of chairs. Donations amounting to $84.50 were taken up for the benefit of the family who lost all their personal possessions. The Ladies Aid Society of the Methodist Church spent Tuesday sewing for them. In 1929, Victor Westfall, who owned the Fallbrook Hardware Store on the corner of Maine and Alvarado, was appointed volunteer fire chief. In 1930, the paper reported, San Diego County will furnish a fire truck if Fallbrook can supply at least 10 men and abide by the rules and bylaws of the recently organized County Firemen's Association. 23 men signed up. In July of that year, the paper reported that County Fire Warden Luther Gordon drove into Fallbrook Wednesday morning at the wheel of a brand new Ford fire truck to be stationed here for the fighting of forest, brush, and structural fires. That same year, State Fire Warden John Clark said that boys 16 years of age and over when drafted by an officer must go to the fire line. Also in 1930, Bob Aberg was nominated as volunteer fire chief and he announced that Ed Myers would grant the fire department the use of his lot in the rear of the Hill Shoe Store for the site of a new firehouse. One estimate on the material and construction for a firehouse to accommodate two trucks was given at three hundred and ninety-three dollars and eighty cents. In 1932, Carl G. Palm became volunteer fire chief. In 1934, Carol Husher was made volunteer fire chief. In 1936, the Fallbrook Garage on South Main was chosen as a temporary firehouse. In 1941, the Fallbrook Volunteer Fire Department received a, a civilian defense trailer pumper unit from the County of San Diego. The unit was housed in the high school bus barn. In 1932, Bill Thurber became fire chief. During World War II and in 1943, Bill Thurber was appointed civilian fire chief of Fallbrook and he announced that he needed a crew of 100 members who would be available in case of a war emergency in the Fallbrook area. In 1945, most of the volunteer firefighters were in military service fighting the war, and the fire truck was sold, the department was disbanded. After World War II, volunteer firefighters returned to Fallbrook, and the volunteer fire department was reestablished. The civilian defense trailer pump was moved to Donald Anthony's butane plant on South Main Street where a fire station was established. To call the volunteers to the station, Donald Anthony hooked up a train whistle to a large butane tank and had a telephone hooked to a switch which would open the valve to the whistle when a phone call came into the fire station. It worked well but it used quite a bit of butane and the whistle continued to blow until a volunteer could respond to the station and answer the phone. <laughs> In 1947, the Fallbrook Volunteer Fire Department was reorganized so they could operate under San Diego County. Thirteen members formed the Fallbrook Volunteer Fire Department. The fire department held dances that year to raise money. They tried a subscription program for, where for $3 a year you would receive fire protection, but the program failed. 
One reason given was firemen are a soft-hearted bunch and could not stand by and watch a non-subscriber's house burn. Bill Thurber built a stall at his welding shop at 1019 South Main and, fi and the fire department was moved there. This was the first official fire station. Today, it is the firehouse broiler. In 1948, the fire department bought its first resuscitator. Evening classes were held so everyone could learn how to use it. It is now on display in the historical society. By the end of 1949, the department grew to 16 firefighters. That year, the Fallbrook Volunteer Fire Department became the first fire department in the state to use radios for communications. In 1951, Donald Anthony gave the fire department a 1934 Packard ambulance for a rescue rig. Also, a 19, in 1951, a Henny 1942 Packard ambulance was bought for $1,000. It was first used on December 7, 1951, when a vehicle hit a train on East Mission and Santa Margarita Drive. In 1952, five fire call boxes were installed, one at the fire department headquarters, one at Alvarado and Maine, one at the high school, one at Elder and Hill Grammar School, and one at the Citrus Packing, Clant, uh, packing Plant. There is a sample of a fire box right in the back. Uh, it's that red box back there. In 1953, the San Diego Board of Supervisors approved and signed a resolution forming the Fallbrook Fire Protection District. Bill Thurber was fire chief. The Fallbrook Volunteer Fire Company was disbanded as the Fallbrook Fire Protect Protection District took over. In 1954, the fire department took over the task of recording the local weather for the National Weather Service. Frank Levering became the fire department accountant. In 1955, the old Union Oil bulk plant on East Mission burned to the ground because there was no nearby fire hydrant. That year, during Pioneer Days, the department organized a clown act to dramatize the need for fire protection. During one of those celebrations, there was an accident on Highway 395. Bill and his crew in their clown get-ups rushed to help. Arriving, they found the injured person was movie queen Ruth Warwick. When she saw them approaching, she said, I don't know whether or not I want to go with these clowns. <laughs> the crew took her to the Fallbrook Hospital, the 300 block on Main Street, which was a converted residence. Miss Warwick had a beautiful head of red hair and had a scalp wound that needed to be stitched. A doctor asked Thurber to cut, her, cut out a big circle of hair around the wound. She cried, you can't do that, I make my living with that red hair. So Bill clipped out a narrow line of hair on each side of the wound and the doctor repaired the damage. Later, Miss Warwick sent Bill and crew an autographed photo pictured here. She had cut the picture on the scalp and inserted a neat white cloth bandage. The original photo hung in Bill Thurber's office for years. In 1957, with an agreement with the Fallbrook Public Utility District, the fire district installed the first fire hydrant in Fallbrook at the corner of Fallbrook Street and Golden Road. The first full-time paid firefighter was hired, Ralph Lash. In 1962, the fire department bought the old high school and sold a gym to the boys club. SDG&E installed the first gas line in Fallbrook. In 1963, the Board of Supervisors approved the Fallbrook Air Park. On December 7th of that year, the fire station headquarters at 315 East Ivy was opened, as was station number 2 at 2180 Winter Warm. In 1976, after 35 years, Fire Chief Bill Thurber retired. Andy Vanderlyn became the fire chief, and station 3 opened to serve the Olive Hill area. In 1979, station 4 opened near the Montserrat Mobile Home Park, to serve the Palomesa area. In 1982, Station 5 opened in the Bonzel area and eventually there was a sixth station in Rainbow. In 1987, the Fallbrook Fire Protection District reorganized with the Rainbow Volunteer Fire Department 
to form the North County Fire Protection District. 1989, the last of the old members who helped form the fire department had a gathering at Bill Thurber's home. In 1990, a $1.5 million fire erased 75 years of Fallbrook history. The old Fallbrook citrus plant built in 1916 burned to the ground. The building was being considered for placement on the National Register of Historic Places. Deputy Fire Marshal Ralph Steinhoff said the owners were found to be in violation of fire codes concerning electrical wiring, cover plates, and fruit ripening gases that were fire hazardous. In 1996, Bill Thurber passed away. Chief Vanderlyn retired from the district. Ed Burcham became fire chief. On February 10, 2002, the community experienced, experienced the Gavilan Fire. Pushed by winds that were unusual for February, the fire burned several thousand acres and 43 homes in just a few hours. In 2003, Bill Metcalf became fire chief and is chief to this day. Wildfire once again struck the community in the early morning hours of October 21, 2007, when the Rice Fire was ignited on Rice Canyon Road, just south of Rainbow. Within a few short hours, the fire, the fire crossed I-15 and directly threatened downtown Fallbrook. For the first time in the community history, the entire town was evacuated. Over the next several days, the Rice Fire would consume nearly 10,000 acres and destroy nearly 240 homes. Over the years, Fallbrook has lost the original Baptist Church, the Santa Fe Railway Depot, the Citrus Packing Plant, and the Library, all historic buildings that were part of what made Fallbrook unique. Through the years, many have put their lives at risk to serve and protect this community. Here are a few of them. In front of the main fire station on Ivy Street stands a memorial to those who dedicated their lives to helping others. It's a tribute to those who fought on the front lines and those who worked behind the scenes to make it all happen. In light of the current fire at Idlewild and the recent tragic loss of 19 firefighters in Arizona, the plaque at this memorial really sums it all up. Quote, it is said that there is no greater love than to give one's life for a friend, but even greater is to give one's life for a stranger. There can be no greater act. To the firefighters past and present and to those who have honored us by being here today, I'm sure you will all join me in saying thank you. Will all the firefighters past and present please stand up?